Occupy Wall Street, Revolution in America. Some are begging for a revolution in America. I'm sure that everyone in the Nazi concentration camps also dreamed of a revolution so they could be free, but instead 27 died out of every 28 that were incarcerated, and there was no revolution, only death. When your government wants fewer people in the world, deciding who to kill is easy. If you protest, you're at the top of the list. They don't want thinking people who oppose the crimes they commit. They want obedient slaves. Well, some of us are not going to take this, and we're in the streets finally, and the movement is growing. For most of us who want change but found writing our congressmen a waste of postage and time, there is no alternative but to take to the streets in peaceful protest. You can tell by the legislation that is passing that the trend is less freedom, bigger government, and more wars. We have 44 million on food stamps, and the trillions we are wasting on wars is all borrowed money. This is insanity, but it is also our leadership. Those who have been lending us money have closed our account, and our leaders can't write any more bad checks, even if they raise the spending limit and think that they can go on spending like drugged hippies. They have a lot of nerve to paint the protesters as drug-using hippies. The country has been led to demise. The leadership is certainly culpable for where we are today. Democrats and Republicans are to blame. We have a lot of great Americans like Jesse Ventura, Alex Jones, Judge Napolitano, Charlie Sheen, Dennis Kucinich, and Ron Paul. But who runs for president? We get those who support the status quo and think it's a good idea to spy on Americans, tax income, violate the Constitution, and give more power to the federal government, even though the record shows that this is catastrophic. Government now owns 65% of everything that has value. This is central planning, and the Soviet Union already tried this experiment. We fought communism, and now we are the communists. We fought fascism, and now we are the fascists. We fought imperialism, and now we are the imperialists. We fought the Nazis, and now they are ruling America. The people don't know that every time a corporation gets favorable legislation, it kills the freedom, the fairness, and the Constitution, even if it produces profits for the corporations, which are owned by local governments, cities, and counties for the most part, 174,000 of them, which have trillions of dollars from overtaxation and the public doesn't know about it. Where will this lead? The government will close in on the remaining 35%, and the laws will give more advantage to the corporations. The people will suffer, and they will be in the streets, not in the hundreds of thousands, but in the millions, and they won't be peaceful anymore. When they see a woman punched in the face by arrogant and belligerent police, the mobs will disarm that cop and use his weapon on him. The world will be rid of one bad cop who will never again punch anyone in the face or use his baton on peaceful demonstrators or unruly ones. When people see the arrests of those who simply want to redress their grievances and are peaceful protesting, they get very angry and want to join the masses who are in the streets. There is a campaign underway to discredit the protesters, and it's taking hold with many critics of those who simply want to say we can do better, we must do better, things must change now. They are calling us hippies, yet I don't see any hippies. They call us drug users. I saw Scott Olson in a marine uniform. Are they talking about him? The police shot him in the head in Oakland. They don't respect the marine uniform. So why should we respect the police uniform? If the police show respect, they deserve respect. I saw Naomi Wolf in an evening gown, arrested for walking down the sidewalk. Is she the drugged hippie they're talking about? When government is behind all the drug deals in the world, they have a lot of nerve to use this as their platform for ridicule. Who are the drug users that the critics are talking about? Why is the public so easily fooled by propaganda? Why are the police using batons, punching with fists, and arresting peaceful protesters? Are they under mind control like the assassins of the last 20 years? There is only one reason, and that's because we live in a dictatorship like the one in Syria. 
Our administration calls for Assad to step down. How about the American leader? Will he step down too, or does he have to be taken down by revolution? To stay in power against the wishes of the people, the dictator must use force against the people. Cameras will record the bloodshed and the stacks of bodies of the innocent. When the dictator uses force and it is filmed, the people revolt even more than before. They are more determined to remove the hated ruler, and they will never forget the carnage or the way that they suffered at the hands of the dictator. The dictator might be feared, but he will never be popular, and the people will be waiting for the moment to strike. Assad is finished, but so is the regime in America, because the people reject the leadership, and at first the protests are peaceful. Assad has murdered 3,500 protesters as of November 2011, and the protesters still aren't backing down. Assad has no future, and neither does the American mafia that rules the people against their will. Our government has become much like a neighborhood where the mafia is in total control, and so those who live in that gang-infested neighborhood are protesting, and they should protest. They are no longer silenced by recommendations to write their congressmen. We all know that our representatives don't represent us anymore. Congress is obsolete. The dictator uses the executive order instead of running his edicts through Congress or getting the approval of the American people. What is this, a monarchy? We don't want royalty ruling ruthlessly in the land of the thief and the home of the slave. We kind of like the constitutional form of government. We are not at all happy about the turn of events here in America. We are in the streets today without weapons. But our Constitution says that we need to have a revolt now and then just to keep things in order. We need to make the government fear the people again, and only revolution can achieve this. If there's a revolution, heads are going to roll, and some of those heads are going to be the Wall Street Mafia and the Police Mafia and the Congressional Cowards who failed to do the right thing. When heads roll, leaders like Assad take notice, for he is next. Dictators who don't respect the people may not last. Few of them ever do last for very long. When the people fear the government and the government has cameras everywhere, that's tyranny. We don't want tyranny, so we protest, and they arrest us. That's more tyranny, and we don't like that either. So more of us are taking to the streets in protest of the tyranny and the brutality and the arrests. America is on the verge of a revolution, and I was hoping it would be peaceful, but I think it might turn violent at any time. Many are warning that they have come without weapons this time. If you thought the riots of Los Angeles in 1994 were bad, just wait until the entire country is in revolution. There are those who are in the police department who don't agree with the orders to beat, harass, clear, and arrest protesters. There are those in military who think the wars are unjustified, cruel, and imperialistic. They want to see a return to the Constitution, and for president they favor that guy with two first names, and all the CIA mind control at Montauk won't change their minds. If a revolution comes to America, they'll be fighting on the side of the people against those who make a killing off the bloodshed and don't share it with anyone. If there is a revolution, there is only one of two sides that you can be on. You can be with the people who want fairness, justice, constitutional law, peace, and prosperity, or you can side with those who don't give a rat's ass about you and your family, wage wars we can't afford, and have been killing American citizens who have not been charged with a crime. Now what's it going to be? Which side are you on? Is fascism worth defending? Is your life worth giving to the warmongers? If there's a revolution, do you want to defend the murderers? When the masses decide, which side will they choose? Fairness, freedom, and constitutional law, or tyranny? If you can't see the trend, let me make it clear. You side with the oppressors, who pass out trillions of your dollars to their friends, and you'll be slaughtered, along with those who think they have us under total control with their Walmart spy cameras and their execution lists. 99% of the total population will side with the people, and you will find yourself on the wrong side of this movement. It won't take long at all to eliminate the 1%, and America will be a much better place without them. 
without their tyranny, without their taxation, without their enslavement, without their batons, without their wars, without their wasteful spending of borrowed money, without their raised spending limits, without their puppet president and their bought Congress, without their executive orders, without their corrupt legal system and overcrowded prisons, without their invasions and occupations of sovereign nations, which are no threat at all to us. America is better off without their grip on oil reserves, without their imperialism, without their plans for a one-world government, without their occupations of oil-rich countries or dope fields, without their FEMA concentration camps, without their Homeland Security Gestapo, without the TSA touching your genitals in public places and molesting children so that you can be safe from terrorists when the terrorists are in our own government. America will be better off without their false flag events, without their inside jobs and their cover-ups, without their FBI confiscating videos so we don't learn the truth, without their legislation to trim the freedoms and expand the powers of government, without their socialist security system, which is nothing but a slush fund that can be easily raided by Congress, pays out less than any other investment, and is properly called a Ponzi scheme, run by government, which puts a gun to your head, forcing your participation, confiscates wages earned by your labor, and then has the nerve to call it a contribution. The dictionary definition of contribution doesn't say anything about a gun to your head. America would be a better place without fluoridated water, which destroys teeth, apparently. And vaccines would be better without mercury and virus, and children would be better off, too. We'd all be better off without lab-created H1N1 flu virus and SARS targeted at Asians. We'd all be better off without plans for depopulation genocide and their philosophy of us as useless eaters. America would be better off without a military-industrial complex, without their CIA, FBI, and other criminal organizations and alphabet gangs, without their fractional reserve banking fraud that creates money out of thin air for bankers at our expense, without the IRS mafia, which is the collection agency for the illegal and unethical Federal Reserve, We'd all be better off without the Federal Reserve, which isn't federal, has no reserves, and in fact causes inflation, robbing depositors of their life savings. We also don't need an attorney general who is involved in gun running and arming Mexican gangs who deal American drugs. We don't need a government which is involved in the production, importation, and sale of drugs like heroin and cocaine. America would be a lot better off if we could eradicate the fungus which is rotting the fruit bowl. You decide if you want to be one of the rotting fungi or part of the wealth-creating fruit of our country. Those are the only two options. What do you think?